We'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which this podcast was produced, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. We pay our respects to Elders past and present. It's March 2024 and we're in Manila. The man best known as the French Spider-Man has just climbed 47 storeys of the GT International Tower. It's one of the highest skyscrapers in the Philippines and Alan Robert has scaled the 712 foot building without any safety equipment, just a bag of chalk and a pair of climbing shoes. He's done it before and he'll do it again. With more than 150 structures under his belt, including the Burj Khalifa, Eiffel Tower and the Empire State Building. In the climbing world, he's a rock star. More people watched his climb of the National Bank of Abu Dhabi than the opening ceremony of the Football World Cup Finals. He doesn't see this as a sport, but instead a life path. He prepares carefully before each ascent, calculating the risks and ensuring his mind is totally focused. He must get it right. I'm Matt Middleton and this is Head Game. Today, the notorious French Spider-Man on undertaking some of the riskiest and most dangerous challenges in the world and loving every second of it. I am extremely excited right now to be speaking with the famous French Spider-Man, Monsieur Alain Robert. Monsieur Alain, comment ça va? Oh, ça va bien, euh, en direct euh, de Bali, où j'habite depuis euh, 11 ans, you know. I am live in, in Bali, uh, which I've been living uh, for 11 years. It's a pleasure to meet you, it really is. I'm a huge, huge fan myself. I've been following your stuff since day dot, since, you know, you, uh, you brought the world to your attention, hanging off of uh, structures and buildings. Um, but let's get into it first and foremost, um, Alain. Uh, when did you start climbing? Did you start climbing the moment, you know, you left your mother's womb? <laughs> did you start, were you like a, a, a kid that climbed all the time? Not exactly like that. Actually, my story is more complicated. Uh, I born as a, as, as a kid that was afraid of everything, that was shy, that was lacking of self-confidence. Uh, oh, wow. And uh, I, I, I had a dream. I wanted to become uh, courageous. So it, 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 took me, uh, it took me quite some time, you know, because um, at some point I was just thinking, uh, uh, what is the meaning of a dream? Is it something that is just a dream and I forget about it? Or shall I uh, try uh, to realize my dream? And then I did choose to uh, realize it. So um, later on, I got inspired. I saw a movie. Uh, it's, a, it's a story of a plane who crashed near the top of uh, Mont Blanc. Uh, two brothers, they are mountaineering climb, climbers. They are, they are climbing a, a steep mountain. And then I've been, uh, I've been amazed by that. And uh, I got really inspired by that. Can you remember your first climb, the, the first time that you thought, do you know what? I'm actually quite good at this and uh, I enjoy it. Well, actually, that, that, that was even uh, purely by uh, accident. You know, um, I, I was at school. There was a uh, two meeting uh, teacher in a row. And then I went home. I realized that uh, I didn't have my key. Back in the days, I was living on the seventh floor. And then uh, it looks the building was going to be uh, easy, which it was. But uh, I climbed the, the seven-story building. Oh, wow. So that's where it all started. Nothing to do with climbing. Just you didn't want to be left outside. <laughs> yeah, more, more like by, uh, <laughs> by uh, obligation, uh, I did it. Yeah. But that, that, that was kind of simple. It's like going from uh, one uh, handrails to the next. So n nothing to do like, uh, like climbing, you know. Did you climb that and think, oh, I enjoyed that? I wasn't really scared. And did you get a bit of a buzz from it? Well, definitely. But uh, more like uh, back in the days, we are talking about uh, more than 50 years ago. Um, I had no real uh, option. I was living in France in the middle of nowhere. Climbing was not existing. I couldn't join the uh, Alpine Club because I was too, too young. 
So I did start by, uh, by joining, uh, becoming a Boy Scout. And there I met someone that also wanted to climb. So otherwise, maybe uh, if uh, I had never met that guy, I was never going to climb uh, ever. I I'm not sure, you know, sometimes life is taking some, uh, you know, direction, which at the beginning, it looks uh, a bit uh, funny. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's that sliding door moment, isn't it? So talk me through your first time that you uh, sort of realized that you this is what you wanted to do. You wanted to climb. You that's you know you were passionate about it. You had a message behind it. When was the first time that you thought, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm really going to make this career? I pretty much uh, knew it uh, right away. Like may maybe when I was uh, twelve or thirteen, I. I I didn't know that uh, one day I would be able uh, to make a living from uh, sponsors. So I was just thinking more like becoming a mountaineering uh, guide, uh, you know, that kind of people who are making a living. They, they get uh, clients to climb Mont Blanc or that kind of stuff. So uh, more, more, more like that. And, uh, and of course, when I started to become uh, famous, then I have also realized that uh, I could make a very good living by just uh, climbing. So instead of, of teaching, uh, that was really uh, climbing for myself. That's quite a, quite a segue. So when did you first um, do your first solo climb? Oh, you know, when I was uh, this uh, Boy Scout, I, I was with a friend, uh, Pierre, actually his name, and uh, sometimes we were climbing, uh, we were free soloing, you know, easy stuff, but, you know, uh, one uh, next uh, to each other and, you know, just doing understand like that. Yeah, so from a, from a young, young age, you're always, always climbing. I was quite similar, you know, when I was young, I was, I was climbing around everywhere, climbing buildings, and, you know, I was, uh, I went on to do mountaineering, so it was a bit different, and the military, so it was a bit different to your direction, but... Take me back to that first moment you caught the eyes of the world. The attention of the world was in 94 uh, when I climbed in, uh, in Chicago, the uh, Accenture Tower. But actually before it, uh, my, my real legacy is on rocks. What I did on rocks is far more uh, impressive than uh, what I did on Berlin. Talk me through that, Alain. Talk me through that. People are, are, are not really aware because it was uh, before the uh, internet. Uh, back in the days, there was like only a few uh, TV stations, so not much uh, access to the media. Even Climbing Magazine, they wanted not to publish me because they just thought that what this guy is doing is too dangerous. We don't want to show a bad uh, example uh, to our readers. So um, we are only go going to post uh, like a small uh, pictures, like really something uh, very short. Things have completely uh, shifted when uh, Alex Arnold uh, climbed uh, El Capitan. Yes. Suddenly uh, people, they have started to realize that it was possible to do uh, very hard stuff on rocks, which Alex, he said it, uh, he, he gave an interview for one of my uh, documentary film in 2020, and he explained that actually I am the dude, I am the OG, I am the guy who was free soloing uh, Pfeiffer Indy uh, when he was uh, still a baby. Uh, you know, it was in uh, 1991. But the problem is that, of, of course, he knew about this, uh, this part of my life because uh, we met in, um, in a film festival in uh, Poland. So he knew all about it. I got, I got a big award uh, back in the days and everything. But the, the, the thing is, most people, they didn't really know. Only a very small, small uh, niche of people uh, were fully aware about it. And this is not the way you are making a living. This is also not a way that people are really uh, knowing you. So yeah. it, it, it is more actually when I shifted uh, onto buildings. And that was the right time because what I was doing on rocks was so on the edge, so on the cutting edge that I, I couldn't go any further. I, I was climbing some days. I was at 50-50. I was actually the first person in the world free soloing uh, five in D. Even Alex, he said, he, he still didn't climb a, a, a 30 in the uh, free solo. 
Wow. So that's that's why we're having this conversation, Alain. And and we are, we we are talking about thirty three years back. Yeah, exactly. 1991, 1990, that era, you were free climbing. And like you said, you know, free climbing, there was no internet back then. There was no exposure. You know, it was a very, very tiny, small community that went out rock climbing and, you know, there wasn't really a known sport. So there was, there was no way of no one even realizing what you were capable of or you know the the outstanding climbs that you were doing and how dangerous they were because there was no exposure to it exactly and and what was uh, frustrating for me is uh, when finally i got uh, access to the mainstream medias when i started climbing buildings i was explaining to the journalists that uh, what i did on rocks was insane and they said no on rocks you know there is a there is a pocket there is a other guys who did it but on buildings you are the only one and it's move and and so i i said it i don't know how many times for like maybe a year or two and then <laughs> one, one day i even forgot myself that uh, that was my background and that was my legacy it resurf it resurfaces in 2017 when Alex climbed uh, El Capitan. Otherwise, I, I have I have simply forgotten. It's been submerged by the structures that you've climbed. But free climbing, free soloing um, on rocks is extremely difficult. If you get that wrong, you know, on buildings you can get quite, I suppose, quite a good handhold, quite a good foothold. But on rocks, sometimes people don't realize the difficulties of being on your fingers. You know, being no, on your toes. I, 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 exactly. This is what people don't realize. You know, climbing on rocks is far more random. There is a, there is, there may be good pockets, and there, there may be, you know, like uh, only uh, a, a single uh, finger hole, uh, even only one cm pocket. Then suddenly you're having a, a dyno. So you know, by comparison, it's insane. As on buildings. You can easily understand right away, you know, it takes like sometimes uh, one minute and you know, okay, I can easily climb that building. So why did you transition from free climbing to buildings? Wh wh where did that come about? How did you make that decision? Because I, I, I knew that uh, I, I, was, uh, I, was, I was going too far away on rocks. I nearly fell, uh, I don't know uh, how many times I was climbing, uh, you know, some of the routes that I climbed uh, back in the days, I was at 50-50. Uh, so uh, it, it means that uh, I was uh, never sure that uh, I would be uh, finishing the day. And then, you know, when I got this proposal uh, to climb on Berlings, I... At, at first, I, I, I was perplexed because uh, nobody has ever done that before. So I just thought, those guys uh, are nuts. At least they were paying me a nice trip in the U.S., uh, going to uh, New York, Chicago, <laughs> Dallas, and Houston. So I just thought, well, at the very worst, uh, at least uh, I am having a 10 days uh, holiday. And uh, at the very best, <laughs> may maybe, maybe there is still something that uh, I could do. And then once I was in town, then I realized that, wow, there is a stuff, uh, there, there is actually a real uh, potential. And I was amazed. Yeah, I got you. I, I, was, I was overly uh, excited. But, you know, the problem is uh, those people, they wanted to make it uh, officially, you know, approved. But it took them two months before they came back to me and they said, uh, we tried very hard, you know, on all of the buildings that uh, you have spotted and you told us that you could uh, climb it, we cannot get any approval. Then they, they, we said, we, we spoke with some lawyers. It seems that it's not a big crime. And uh, at the very worst, you could land in jail maybe like up to two weeks, but uh, nothing really uh, serious. And then, I, and then I decided, okay, let's go for it. Wow. So you, you took the opportunity, you thought, you know what, I can travel around the US, um, I can do some cool stuff. Were you excited when they told you that you, you could climb and maybe, maybe you know, you haven't got no permits to climb, but climb anyway, because if you do, the worst that can happen is that you'll spend a couple of days in prison. Did that, did that excite you? Yeah, yeah. Well, at, at the same time, uh, it scares me a lot because I, I was afraid that maybe, you know, some, uh, I don't know, some uh, security guys or, or cops, they may try to shoot me. So, uh, you know, I had, <laughs> I had kind of a funny thought on my mind, uh, you know, like not being sure that I, I, 
somehow I, I was very frail. I really wanted to do it. It looks like completely uh, insane. You know, you get to understand that I, I had been as far as I could go on rocks. So for me, it was the perfect uh, transition. It was perfect. Suddenly, you know, I, I was discovering something new. I was discovering uh, traveling the whole world, meeting people, uh, becoming famous, which is not bad. Uh, uh, go, go, going to prison, you, you know, it, it was just like, it was suddenly offering me, um, uh, you know, a full uh, spectrum of uh, everything. And, uh, and, and to be honest with you, I, I really loved it. Now, now I start, you know, to get, uh, you know, I came back on rocks. I am no longer um, a, a performant uh, climber. So I am more like an outsider. Before I, I was at my I was at my top, so I I wanted to 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 push the envelope a bit further all the time. But now I have no more uh, ambition. Uh, only climbing back on rock free solo, and uh, for me it's already insane. You had a big accident back in 1982, was it? I fell from 20 meters uh, head first, and at the bottom of the cliff, uh, it was uh, a limestone uh, slab. So meaning my both hands, they they exploded. You can you can see the shape of my of my hands. Wow, that was from the accident. I have I have inherited of a 66 percent uh, disability. Main, mainly located on my uh, fingers, on my uh, wrist, on my forearms, on my elbows. You achieved everything after with those injuries. Oh, yeah, yeah. Meaning what, what is insane, it's uh, nine, nine years later, I was the first person in the world free soloing a 5 in D. That is phenomenal. That is, and that's all in free solo climbing. See, that's what I mean. You had such a credible and such an honorable and such a successful uh, free climbing career which then has completely disappeared really because of of your uh, your building climbing I completely uh, overshadowed all i have done that was uh, insane and 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 of course when i started to move back onto social media then i have understood that i was going to use it because I had still uh, plenty of old uh, footages, and then I, I have started, you know, step by step, uh, and, and now pretty much everyone knows that uh, uh, what I did on rocks, especially because uh, Alex uh, Honold uh, he gave uh, like a ten minutes uh, interview, and he's explaining a lot of things. He's explaining uh, uh, that I, I was in advance uh, from my time, like what I, what I was doing. So he's explaining all of that, and uh, that has helped me a lot. You know, now, now a lot of people uh, they are like, "Wow, you are you are the you are the, the 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 OG. You are you know you are the number one. You are this, you are that." So I don't care because there is no competition in between uh, me, Alex, or, or there, there is like only a couple of guys who climb uh, very difficult uh, routes in the whole world. It's like uh, yeah, we are we are we are like five or six. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. So climbing, there's always been part of your, in your DNA, it's always been part of you. And when you went over to uh, climb structures, it was more the opportunity, the excitement. Now talk me through the first building that you climbed. That, 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 was, in, that was insane because uh, I, you know, I remember because on that day, uh, the film uh, director, he knew that I was going to do something uh, illegal. So they put me in a nice uh, five-star hotel, maybe thinking that it, 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 it could be his last night, something like that, kind of. <laughs> his last and, dinner. And, the last yeah, supper. his last dinner, yeah. Then, um, and, and, and I remember because uh, I, I kept on thinking, you know, uh, about the potential uh, consequences, but... Also, whether I would be uh, capable to climb that building or not, because uh, I had zero uh, idea. You know, back in the days, this guy, the, the film director, he said, you cannot go to the building, you cannot touch it, you cannot try it. So meaning it's just like, okay, I saw it, that's all I know. So, 
uh, and also telling me, oh, in Chicago, you need to be very fast on the first 60 meters because uh, they are using uh, this kind of very tall uh, ladder, the, 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 the firefighter. So it's just like, so on my mind, I was thinking, uh, I, I have never climbed a fucking building in my life. I didn't even check that, that building. And uh, I, I need to get sure that uh, within uh, three or four minutes, I have already climbed uh, 60 meters. And then I was thinking, on the top of it, there will be cops. They may try to shoot me. Or Then the next day, then we plan, okay, uh, you go to the building at uh, 8 a.m. and everything. But he called me in the morning and he said, Alain, we have, we're having a bad news. There is a marathon uh, all around the, the building in this uh, area. It's uh, completely uh, locked. Uh, there is full of cops and everything. So I had to wait uh, until uh, 2 p.m. So then the more I was waiting, the more I was getting uh, anxious and uh, nervous. Finally, at 2 o'clock, he called me. He said, it's fine, Alain, be ready. You know, uh, cops now, they are gone and everything. 30 minutes later, what's happened? It, it started to rain. Again, no, again, no. again, he called me and, and he said, Alain, you know, we are, we are really sorry. You, 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 need, you need to postpone uh, the ascent because uh, now, now it's rains. So I waited again uh, like one hour and then he called me back and he said, well, now, now it's sunny again. We went to the building. It's completely dry. Alain, you know, be ready. Uh, prepare your, your climbing shoes take a taxi and uh, ask uh, your friend uh, Alexis, who is the photographer, to drop you. And then uh, finally, I was, uh, I was at it. And, uh, and right away, I, I found it insane, I, I, except that I, I was really, really uh, tired because the way I managed to climb the first 60 meters was, uh, was really, was completely wrong. Actually, now, now if I climb a building, uh, I, I just need to be fast for the, the, the first two meters. And not even if there is nobody, I don't even need to rush. Wow. But I, 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 had, I, I had so much on my mind that I, I nearly had uh, to run on, on the building for 60 meters that finally... By the time uh, I have climbed uh, 60 meters, I was completely uh, exhausted. I was uh, dehydrated because those were uh, windows, uh, mirror, and uh, with the sun and the reflection, that I was really, really, really dead. Wow. So you had the, this, this must have been absolutely crazy because I can imagine once you get going, it's, it's, you've got no preparation, just visuals. You can't look at the building. You can't to figure it out you literally have to get on there and go 60 meters so you hit 60 meters and and what you what what's going through your head what do you think at this stage you think well i can slow down a bit now i can or did you just go just keep going just keep going no more more like uh, I, I i was into the um, i was into into that race with the time and uh, i i don't even know it's like you are no longer uh, thinking uh, on your own. You, you, are, you are thinking uh, uh, based on what uh, this uh, film uh, director... You, you know, the, the problem is uh, once you have taken uh, uh, a certain pace, it's difficult to change it. It's not so simple suddenly, you know, like uh, slowing down, reducing your speed. It, it, it doesn't happen like that. It is happening for sure because uh, actually um, your 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 physical stamina is uh, decreasing. Then at the same time, your speed is also uh, decreasing. But other, otherwise, it's like you you are too much. Um, it's like a little bit like uh, if before it, I have been kind of uh, brainwashed. And I, I had been computerized to climb this building uh, that fast. Do you have any distractions whilst you're climbing? Did you know, were there police around? Could you hear sirens? Could you, what, was there any distractions where you thought to yourself, oh, no, I just, you know, I've, got to, I've got to ignore these and just concentrate on the climb and get to the top. You know, they might, they might cause me to fall. No, but because I, actually that, that was different, you know, Let, let's say that uh, I, I was really focused on my target. So priority, uh, this is uh, to stay alive. And then I, I was more on uh, survival instinct uh, mode. 
So yes, I could hear sirens. I could I could hear uh, cops. I I could hear some people uh, screaming at the bottom. Uh, some some uh, people, you know, gathering uh, at the bottom of the buildings. But I I, I didn't I didn't really care. Meaning uh, that that was not uh, important. It, it, it's more like. Um, you know, when you go to the supermarket, there is music uh, as a background, and then uh, you go to the supermarket not for listening music, but to buy uh, some food. Me, I was climbing uh, that building. My mission was to climb the building. It was not about uh, listening and watching what was happening uh, around me. So I, I was really uh, concentrated yeah, on my target. Yeah, you were super, super focused. I suppose you can't afford not to be focused when you're climbing something like that because... Only one mistake and you're, you're, you're gone. This, right? is, this is, you know, every day I am having this uh, question a uh, hundred times uh, and every day I am replying because people, they don't understand. They, they are thinking that uh, I don't feel fear and I'm, I'm explaining. I am same as uh, any uh, other human beings. I, I, I do feel fear, but the difference, I am mastering my fear. When I am doing something which my life is at stake, I can put my fear aside because I, can't, I, I can't afford to be detracted by uh, thinking that uh, I may fall and I may die. I, I, you know, all, all the more when I was free soloing those uh, 13D on rocks, I, I, I was so on the edge. Then there was absolutely um, no space for, for any single fear because I, I was dealing with some uh, movements so precise, so uh, intrinsically uh, difficult. Then nothing was uh, interfering. Yeah. You're it, just laser it, focused it, on that. Exactly. Laser focused. Exactly. Laser focused. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I, I understand that in the military when I used to, you know, do what I do, I had to be laser focused on the job at hand because if not one mistake, one error, and it, you know, it, you'd be gone. So it, it, you have to stay laser focused in those moments because it's a matter of life or death. If you, if you, you've got to get it right. Going back to, to the climb in Chicago, you get to the top, you get arrested. Do you, do you get a buzz after that? Do you think to yourself, right, this is what I want to do now. I just want to go around the world. Um, if the people are sponsoring me, if people are paying for me to do this, um, I get a buzz off of it. This is what I want yeah, to do and I, this is what I, I'm going I, to do. I was still not at it. I, actually, I have only joined the, the team uh, Sector No Limits. You know, it's a team of uh, athletes. Like uh, some, uh, they, they are they are they are swimming, so scuba diving, uh, uh, well, all that kind of stuff. And they, they were making uh, a documentary film on all of their athletes. So for me, it was free soloing. But except that the film uh, director, he came with the idea that uh, actually this guy he could climb some uh, some uh, rocks in uh, Utah some sandstone looks like a bit like a, like a, like a building and suddenly um uh, uh, along, along the way he's falling asleep and suddenly uh, his image on those uh, rock uh, towers is shifting onto a building so that that was the whole that was the whole uh, idea so so you are, you are seeing me climbing something like a Moses tower in uh, Utah so it's like uh, it looks like nearly like a, like a World Trade Center. And then suddenly we are shifting on something very uh, similar, except that you are in the, in the city, you can drink uh, whenever, and uh, you are not like in the middle of the desert and, uh, you know. Adam, when, when did you first realize that you'd, you, you had captured the, the world's attention, that you were a global celebrity, that people loved watching you climb people supported your climbing and you were you were shifted into the limelight and in into fame when did you realize that moment happened in in, in 94 because for doing this uh, for doing this film i had to climb uh, four different buildings so uh, we within within a short period of time well not that short but like maybe a uh, half year i i climbed those four buildings 
And then I realized that uh, actually uh, I, I started to get uh, demands for interviews uh, every day uh, from uh, all over the world and everything. So then I realized that. And then I started to get demands uh, from people uh, willing to sponsor me, to pay me. To, so, you know, uh, suddenly I, I was in a completely different world. When I was free soloing uh, 530 in D, I could get a very uh, small, uh, tiny uh, little sponsor paying me uh, not much, giving me uh, yeah free climbing shoes and uh, all that stuff. And suddenly, for me, it's just like I could make a fortune and uh, still climbing, meaning still doing something that uh, I love doing. So that was like kind of uh, insane. And to, to be honest with you, I have known celebrity in some places in the world that you can't even imagine. You know, I remember in 96, when I went to Rio de Janeiro, I had been uh, previously three times on Fantastico. Fantastico, pretty much any single Brazilian are watching it on Sunday. So when I arrived at the airport in Rio, everybody was knowing me. I was passing back. There was buses with uh, full of kids. Ombre Arena, Ombre. I, I, I didn't know. It's just like wow. suddenly, suddenly o- overnight. You know, I climb in Abu Dhabi in Dubai with more than hundred thousand people looking at me climbing. It's like a, it's like a Mick Jagger concert. At the bottom, they are like <laughs> watching at you. <laughs> That's amazing. Then, how did that make you feel? Well, it's the same, you know. At, at the same time, when I'm climbing, uh, uh, all the more if it's difficult. If it's not difficult, I can make a show a bit. Uh, now I, I, I have started to understand that when the um, when the, the 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 crowd is uh, shouting, you know, I, I can feel that they are cheering me up. Because, you know, all, all, all the stuff I did, for example, in the UAE or in Qatar, I did it uh, officially. So it means uh, that that's why they, they are allowing uh, more than 100,000 people uh, to come on the spot because uh, it is uh, regimented by uh, like 500 cops. Or I got also this kind of stuff in uh, China. In China, having like 700 uh, militaries taking care of me with a lot of cops and uh, being sure that they could manage uh, all of the all of the people. So those are things that I, I have been living uh, in Kazakhstan. I have been living uh, in Qatar and many times in Dubai, many times in Abu Dhabi, in, um, in uh, Brazil, in Caracas, you, you know, in many countries, even even in Moscow. In Moscow, because that was during the Moscow uh, anniversary in 2011, they were, they, they were doing the biggest uh, video mapping and a burning. I was climbing the, the Moscow University at night. There was a 23-minute film that cost 15 million. There was Vladimir Putin. There was Medvedev. And there was 800,000 people. Wow, that is phenomenal. Anna, that is I've never phenomenal. seen a, a crowd that huge. I, I am still having pictures sometimes. I, I am posting it because it's just like uh, I, I still need to, to scratch my head. Yeah, pinch yourself. Huh? Now, nowadays, yeah, my career is more like uh, backwards. But uh, however, I, I am still climbing. Uh, I am on a, on a project of a big film. A bit like uh, the one, like a free solo, you know, something really uh, with with, uh, with money and, uh, you know, and also, you know, the, the new generation of uh, material. Because, you know, uh, now when I'm watching uh, all the difficult uh, buildings I did 25 years ago, the way, the way they get filmed was shit because the, the cameras were, were bad. The angles were wrong because they were at the bottom as the good angle. They are from above. So it, it has to be drawn or it has to be they've GoPro. they got all the drone shots now. Yeah, they've so, got all the angles, the, 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 the long lenses, everything. Exactly. Now. So, you, you know, it, it, it's like even in this uh, department, the, the, the level has shifted uh, like... Uh, you know, it looks like what I was doing 30 years ago looks like more like a Charlie Chaplin movie. <laughs> and uh, what we are doing now, it's a mission impossible. It's so, completely different. Yeah. And Alan, what I love about you and what you've done 
for this community and what you've done for globally is you've broken the mold when it's come when it comes to climbing buildings because at first it was highly illegal it had to be a secret operation you know you had to go down at the bottom like you said at first wait for the rain wait for the security to go then climb and and you broke that mold where it became accessible people were granting you and you only permission to climb this building you know a, an audience and an escort, a police escort, you completely shattered the mold when it came to something being highly illegal <laughs> to something being celebrated and 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 put on the map and almost breaking down rules and regulations um, because of what you achieved. How did that how does that make you feel now that you can you can go wherever you want basically and go, I want to climb that structure? Anyone else would be like, no, Mr. Allah, go ahead, you climb it. That's phenomenal. That's really good. It's interesting. You know that I, I am in the English uh, school books for the primary school. There is my story all over the world. People, they are learning. Because sometimes, yes, there is a lot of uh, haters on social media. And uh, they are wishing me death. Uh, they are, you, you know, I, I got it again this morning. So I am blocking people. But it's, it, it's annoying. But sometimes I'm responding. I am saying, well... You know that maybe because most likely if you're having kids, they are learning my story at school because I, I am in, in their school books. And uh, whether, you, whether you like it or not. Uh, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> whether you like it or not, your children are going to be reading about I me. am not such a bad example. I've been invited to the Elysee Palace. I have been invited by the king and the queen of Malaysia, the Sheikh Mohammed in Dubai, um, and, and plenty of people. I, I gave talks in Oxford. I gave talks in uh, Cambridge. Uh, I, I am having a statue in China. I am featured in the book uh, among the 100 greatest sport people from all time. I wrote many books, you, you know. Yeah, but you push, you are the epitome of um, pushing human capability and performance. You know, what is there not to celebrate about that? It is, you know, you talk about emotional intelligence, psychological resilience, physical robustness, capability. Why wouldn't you push that out? Why, why there's such a positive message in what you do? And listen, the haters are the haters. Unfortunately, that's a generational thing that you get on social media. Ignore them. But when it comes to human capability and performance, car. You are showing the world that we are a phenomenal, phenomenal um, species and uh, that if you put your mind to things and you, you focus on things, you can achieve uh, the impossible, which is absolutely phenomenal. And what I love about you as well, Anna, is that you recently climbed with your son. Yeah, yeah, we did it like uh, pretty much uh, two years back. And that now this uh, coming October, he wants to do another one with me. And what did you climb with him? Oh, that, that was an easy building in uh, Barcelona. We climbed the uh, 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 glorious uh, tower. But, you know, he has never climbed before, 144 meters. But the problem is that he didn't know uh, how, to, how to manage his uh, muscles. So although, although he's built like, uh, like uh, Bruce Lee or, 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 or a small Schwarzenegger, he, he was completely wasted. I, I was telling him because we, we were close to, uh, to each other and I was telling him, look, Julien, actually me, I am using maybe 5% of my uh, physical capacity and you are using uh, 95%. It, 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 took him, it took him 10 days to recover, 10 days. And, and he's a guy, he, he used to be a parachutist. He's good in any kind of sports. But the, the thing is, you know, when you are confronted uh, with uh, more than 100 meters and you have never climbed before, then I guess the, the way you are, you are, you are grabbing uh, your holds, you, 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 you are pulling uh, far too much. You, you, are, you are so... Exhausting yourself, you, you, exactly. you're pulling up a body, you're you, not using your legs correctly. Exactly. You are so afraid that you may fall, then, then you want to be absolutely sure so you are you are you are giving like uh, maybe 100 kg which at the end of the day maybe two kg is enough but uh, of course and again you know there's nothing like uh, he's obviously got the best the best teacher the best mentor because when it comes to experience like that it is it's about knowing your body it's about knowing how to control your emotions 
and to use them to your advantage. Like you said, you know, pulling yourself up, that's going to exhaust you if you keep doing that. You've got to just, you know, know what you're doing, use all your body, you know, try and, try and conserve that energy to, to get up to the top. Um, Alain, I've absolutely loved chatting with you. It's been absolutely phenomenal. You are, like I said, the epitome of human capability and performance. And what is next for you? Anna, where, what's, what's happening now? Next for me, you know, na- now I am uh, redoing my visa. So it's going to take like uh, another two months. Uh, it's going to be a permanent uh, resident visa in uh, Indonesia. Then uh, I will be only traveling uh, in October. There will be the release of my uh, new book. I'll be climbing as well uh, in Europe. I'll be climbing on rocks in uh, Verdun. And uh, all, all, also, uh, we, we start working on, uh, on a big film. Wow. I, you know what, Alain? I can't wait. It's been absolutely phenomenal talking to you, my man. I love your energy. You're one of these rare people that I can feel your energy through the screen. You know, it's, 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 it's great, mate. Thank you so much for coming on Head Game. And uh, listen, I look forward to reading your new book and look forward especially to the new film that's coming out. Thank you, mate. Thanks a lot. That was a great pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me on Head Game. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of our incredible stories and leave me a review wherever you're listening. I'm Matt Middleton. Catch you again next time.